Shalom, you're watching Arutz Sheva TV. I'm Yoni Kempinski, and this is our daily edition. And we begin in Jerusalem as Arabs riot again in the eastern part of the city. Dozens of Arabs rioted in the Wadi Jos area of Jerusalem Sunday following the death of Muhammad Abu Sankra, age 16, who was injured during another riot a week earlier. The rioters hurled rocks and fireworks at police. A Jewish youth was lightly hurt by rocks and several vehicles were damaged. Police forces used riot dispersal gear against the protesters. The constant terrorism of rock throwing in Arab neighborhoods of Jerusalem is becoming an increasing threat, not only for Jews who happen to pass near such neighborhoods, but for residents of all parts of the capital city. The Jerusalem Magistrates Court has released this evening the names of the suspects of the Messianic cult who were arrested earlier today. Altogether, eight people were placed under arrest by authorities. The central figure of the cult is David Dvash, also known as David Hachito, or David the Best. He's a resident of Kriyat Arba. Dvash denies all allegations that have been made. Drama in the uh, Ben Gurion airport as a uh, flight to Toronto from Israel, an El Al flight with 194 passengers was forced to return after one engine shut off. No one was hurt and the passengers were transferred to a different plane. At 2.15 this morning, after the El Al flight from Ben Gurion to Toronto departed, the control tower was informed of a technical malfunction on the plane. The pilot, according to protocol, requested to return to land at Ben Gurion. The rescue teams, airport teams, and Israel Airport's authority staff rushed to the scene. The plane landed safely, and all the passengers disembarked and were transferred to the terminal to be taken care of by El Al. I'd like to note that throughout the whole process, the passengers were not in danger at all. The INS Tanin, Israel's uh, fourth and most advanced Dolphin-class submarine, is en route to Israel from Germany and the Navy has released video of the vessel and the ceremony in which it was launched at Germany's Kiel shipyards at week's end. Reports claim Israel has modified the Dolphin's 650mm launch tubes to allow the launch of missiles that could carry nuclear warheads. Such missiles should give Israel the ability to deter threatening neighbors like Iran if it delivers a sufficiently convincing threat to make use of them. However, Israel has thus far maintained a policy of nuclear ambiguity. The German weekly Der Spiegel reported that the submarines have a nuclear capability and are part of Israel's weaponry to counter the nuclear threat from Iran. German's Merkel has denied that the submarines have a nuclear capability. Nine years since the eviction from Gush Katif, uh, the annual ceremony took place, uh, especially in memory of the synagogues, which were left behind and later destroyed by the Arabs. The Second Lebanon War, as well as the latest war, are a result of the weakness in the leadership of our nation. In terms of the land of Israel, people think that the land is something we can deal with as a merchandise, that if we give over a piece of the land, it will bring peace. It must be understood that what happened nine years ago, the destruction of Gush Katif, Despite the warning that this place will become an area of the launching of rockets, they didn't want to listen. All the destruction, did it contribute anything, did it bring peace? It was destruction for the sake of destruction, a sin against God. And what we see now are the results, the Second Lebanon War, and what we experience now in Gaza. <laughs> Indeed, not everyone can hear this, but it is our obligation to educate, explain, and say again and again that we need sovereignty on all parts of our land, and realize our godly, historical, and moral right to return to every place with full control, first of all, to the Temple Mount. Thank 
חווינו את עופרת יצוקה, חווינו את עמוד ענן. We experienced operations cast lead, pillar of defense and protective edge. We knew, we warned, we demanded and even begged, saying that this is what will happen. And we were mocked. 339 new rabbis were ordained last week at the chief rabbi in Jerusalem. Our correspondent Cheski Ezra spoke with some of them. Rabbis are being ordinated today after successfully going through at least six exams out of 12 exams that are available for people who want to be ordinated as rabbis. Uh, the exams going through all of the Shulchan Aruch, all of the uh, biblical codex and Jewish Halakha codex, uh, the uh, exams are being divided according to topics. For example, there is an exam about Chupa and Kiddushin, about the marriage process. There is an exam about Isur Veheter, about what is allowed and what is not allowed in the ordinary day-by-day -day lives. There are 12 uh, different exams that uh, are available. Some of them are going to be later ordinated as rabbis of settlements, of villages, of neighborhoods, and, are being, uh, and they would be able, due to this ordinance, to be, to be appointed as official rabbis on behalf of the chief rabbinate of Israel and the local religious council in their cities and in their towns. It's a long process which can be shortened, but if you learn thoroughly and slowly, you remember the material better. The goal of learning to be a rabbi is to bring the light of the Torah to the nation of Israel. I grew up at the home of a rabbi. My father was a rabbi of Eilat as an emissary, a shaliach of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And my grandfather also was a rabbi. We know that the role of every Jew, especially one who has the ability, is to influence in Judaism especially to help those who don't observe all the precepts. The position as rabbi helps, of course, in getting close and helps others receive what we offer. May we succeed in our mission to bring the nation closer. I I think there is a big responsibility in terms of spreading the word of Torah, showing the light of Torah, and guiding people in the path of the Torah. Okay, that'll be all for today. We'll be back next time with more news. Until then, from all of us here at Arutz Shiva, IsraelNationalNews.com. Shalom.